Good day, and thank you for standing by. Welcome to the 2024 second quarter Qualys Investor Call. At this time, all participants are in listen-only mode. After the speaker's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question during the session, you will need to press star 11 on your telephone. You will then hear an automated message advising your hand is raised. To withdraw your question, please press star 11 again. Please be advised that today's conference has been recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to your first speaker today, Blair King, Investor Relations. Please go ahead. Thank you, Marvin. Good afternoon and welcome to Qualys' second quarter 2024 earnings call. Joining me today to discuss our results are Samantha Carr, our President and CEO, and Jumi Kim, our CFO. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you that our remarks today will include forward-looking statements that generally relate to future events, or a future financial or operating performance. Actual results may differ materially from these statements. Factors that could cause results to differ materially are set forth in today's press release and our filings with the SEC, including our latest Form 10-Q and 10-K. Any forward-looking statements that we make on this call are based on assumptions as of today, and we under, uh, undertake no obligation to update these statements as a result of new information or future events. During this call, we will present both GAAP and non-GAAP financial measures. For reconciliation of GAAP to non-GAAP measures is included in today's earnings press release. And as a reminder, the press release prepared remarks in investor presentation are all available on the investor relations website. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Samad. Thank you, Blair, and welcome to our second quarter earnings call. In Q2, we witness organizations increasingly optimize spend within an already tight IT spending environment. Given this dynamic, organizations are standardizing on trusted platforms to consolidate security stacks, leverage automation, and achieve expedient remediation of risk. Qualys has a unique, organically built platform to address this need. Nevertheless, crisp execution is required to fully capitalize on this opportunity. While we have made meaningful progress on several fronts, including growing our sales and marketing team, building momentum with partners, and growing our new business, we have work to do in addressing our upsell execution in the current environment, which resulted in lower than expected bookings growth this quarter. With the upcoming departure of our chief product officer later this month, I plan to directly oversee the product and marketing teams to position us for forward success. I am confident in our ability to re-accelerate growth in the long term with sharpened execution on product-led growth and improved alignment between our product messaging and marketing activities to drive operational efficiencies in our go-to-market motion. At this time, I'd like to thank Pinkesh Shah, our Chief Product Officer, for his contribution during his tenure at Qualys. Although Q2 was a challenging upsell quarter for us, which continued uh, with continued increase in deal scrutiny, we are fortunate that many of our customers have already begun a long-term transformation journey with us. Through the conversations I've had with many CISOs over the past several quarters, their message is clear they are looking to pivot to a natively integrated risk management solution. In the face of sluggish macro, escalating threat environment, and cybersecurity skill gap, organizations need to reduce complexity and cost while presenting measurable risk reduction initiatives to boards and C-level executives. Against this backdrop, Q2 was another quarter of rapid innovation for Qualys, reflecting on our ongoing commitment to technology leadership and customer success. Wallace's mission has been to bring innovative new security solutions to market fueled by customer insights. As a result, we have established a strong track record of converting operational challenges into structural competitive advantages while maximizing lifetime value, ensuring frictionless outcome at scale, and driving immediate ROI on security spend. For example, Wallace pioneered a patching category for security teams. Built on, building on this success, we commenced development of our true risk element capability several quarters ago. I am now pleased to announce that some of these increasingly popular solutions amongst our beta customers will soon enable organizations to respond to zero-day threats and mitigate top exploitable vulnerabilities even when a patch is non-existent or cannot be deployed. This new subset of our broader true risk eliminate roadmap which we call True Risk Mitigate and True Risk Isolate, empower security teams to apply fixable, automated, and intelligent risk-based response solutions to address cybersecurity risk based on an organization's own unique operational characteristics, remediation timelines, and business objectives. With these new capabilities soon going GA, strong customer support, and over 45 million patches deployed year-to-date on Qualys agents, we are increasingly confident that we are once again transforming our customer security operations while further magnifying our competitive differentiation in the market. 
continuing our innovation to help our customers address risks coming from the use of latest technologies like AI, LLM, we are pleased to announce our newest capability, which we call Qualys Total AI. As organizations rapidly deploy AI LLM technologies, the security teams are looking for help to quickly find and comprehensively assess vulnerabilities in these models. With seamless AI security posture management integration, these new adaptive capabilities discover AI LLM usage within customers' environment, scan for vulnerabilities, and prevent data leakage for comprehensive risk assessment, prioritization, and remediation across the entire attack surface with a single click of a button. In addition, we are pleased to announce an extension to our Total Cloud CNAP platform, which now discovers and assesses the risk of all known and unknown in-use Kubernetes container images. Leveraging our own AI and ML technology, we are establishing a baseline for normal behavior for each host container, serverless function, and other objects. Now, through real-time observation of file system processes and network activity, our newest runtime security tools provide organizations with a predictive and threat-based pr protection to actively detect anomalous activities, uh, prevent zero-day attacks, automate response, and help ensure PCI 4.0 compliance in both containerized and legacy environments. These new container runtime insights, combined with toxic risk factors within a unified actionable dashboard, allow for immediate threat qualification prioritization and remediation from code to cluster. We believe this new capability uniquely sets us apart to enable secure and compliant cloud consumption at scale. Turning to our federal agenda, we recently reduced FedRAM moderate certification for our Total Cloud CNAP and EDR solutions, marking another key milestone for the company. We continue to expect our pending FedRAM high certification for several key applications later this year making Qualys the only modern alternative to legacy on-prem scanners for federal, state, and local government agencies at the high impact level. Our investments to establish a public sector presence are starting to yield results, supporting our confidence to address this new vertical and drive incremental growth in the business over time. Finally, with respect to our upcoming enterprise tourist management solution, we, maintain, we remain on track for GA later this year. This extension to our platform is currently in private beta with select few design partners. The ability to bring first and third party data into our platform to holistically detect, quantify, prioritize, and remediate vulnerabilities with automated workflows on a unified dashboard across on-prem cloud and multi-cloud environments is evolving into the go-to risk management solution for enterprises, especially with the context of, in, in the context of a tight spending environment. The early customer feedback we are receiving is very positive, and it's great to see CISOs from around the world actively attend and engage in the many, many risk quantification workshops we have been conducting over the past several months. These innovative new approaches to cybersecurity risk management, along with several others we have showcased at Black Hat this week, allow our customers to reduce complexity and cost, and of equal importance, create multidimensional paths for durable long-term growth in our business. Moving to our business update. We believe that with continued deal scrutiny comes larger opportunity for Qualys over the long term as our natively integrated risk management platform helps customers con consolidate technologies and achieve better outcomes with, within less, fewer resources and immediate ROI. With many of our customers already embracing Qualys to help re-architect and consolidate their stack, Qualys VMDR solution has translated into an enviable customer base, deep penetration, and significant industry recognition. As recently announced, Qualys' VMDR with True Risk was voted the best vulnerability management solution at the 2024 SE Awards Europe for the second consecutive year. We believe Qualys' placement as the number one VM solution further validates our investments in the platform and continue to present the, represent the gold standard for securing customer environments today and in the future. Given Qualys' blueprint for delivering greater value to our customers, our VMDR solution with True Risk is not only fueling new logo lands, but also helping increase platform adoption, especially in the areas of cybersecurity asset management with EASM, uh, patch management, and cloud security. Let me share a couple of recent wins with new customers, which illustrates why companies turn to Qualys to help consolidate their tool security tools and improve their security posture. In Q2, a large federal government agency became a customer of Qualys. This new customer was previously using multiple legacy and next-gen solutions to manage a variety of risk management use cases across their security, IT, and DevOps teams. 
In addition to the complexity of using multi-point products, this government agency was frustrated with increasing costs associated with on-prem deployments. Looking to migrate into a natively integrated cloud-based FedRAMP high-impact level ready solution that met the security, the, the CISA BOD guidelines, they replaced two of their existing vendors in a high six-figure bookings phase one deployment using multiple quality modules right out of the gate. These initial deployments include cybersecurity asset management with ESM, VMDR with TrueRisk, and patch management. Through this highly strategic and competitive way, this customer is now able to leverage unified dashboards that provide them with greater insights and automation that, um, than many of the competitive products they evaluated while taking full advantage of the speed and scale of an integrated platform. This win is a further testament to the investments we're making to expand our federal business and we are also very pleased with the turnout and encouraging feedback from many large government agencies at our public sector, first public sector uh, cybersecurity risk conference that we held in May. In a second new high six-figure customer win, a hyper-growth cloud-native SaaS business standardized on Qualys uh, enterprise storage platform. This company's security team struggled with managing multiple consoles, lack of integration, complex workflows, missed detections, and extended remediation times, which restricted their ability to protect themselves. This customer is now consolidating on the Qualys uh, Enterprise Risk Management Platform, replacing several competing vendors through a natively integrated multi-product solution, including cybersecurity asset management with EASM, VMDR with TrueRisk, patch management, and our total cloud CNAP solution. Now, with a com comprehensive multi-sensor solution, single user interface, and single platform, they have complete visibility and automated remediation across their endpoints and multi-cloud environments. With seamlessly integrated solutions delivered natively on our platform to solve modern security challenges, more and more Qualys customers are beginning to understand how cybersecurity transformation drives better security outcomes, saves time, and costs less. As a result, customers spending $500,000 or more with us in Q2 grew 18% from a year ago to 199. Beyond these wins, we are also increasingly gaining leverage from our partner ecosystem. Our pipeline of business opportunities with partners continues to grow, and our partner-led win rates increase again in Q2. As, a, uh, as our market perception and brand awareness continue to strengthen, we anticipate partner integration with our platform will continue to increase, further strengthening our strategic position, expanding our ecosystem, and broadening our reach. In summary, our rapid innovation engine underscores our, plat our growing thought leadership and the value proposition we deliver to customers seeking to transform, consolidate, and fortify the security posture. Given the large market opportunity in front of us and multiple growth drivers in our business, we anticipate that we can grow at scale long-term, generate cash, and invest in key initiatives that will further extend the gap between Qualys and the competition. With that, I'll turn the call over to Jumi to discuss in more detail our second quarter results and outlook for the third quarter and full year 2024. Thanks, Ahmed, and good afternoon. Before I start, I'd like to note that except for revenues, all financial figures are non-GAAP, and growth rates are based on comparisons to the prior year period, unless stated otherwise. Turning to second quarter results, revenues grew 8% to $148.7 million, with Channel continuing to increase its contribution, making up 46% of total revenues compared to 43% a year ago. As a result of our continued commitment to leverage our partner ecosystem to drive growth, we were able to grow revenues from Channel partners by 17%, outpacing direct, which grew 2%. By GEO, 14% growth outside the U.S. was ahead of our domestic business, which grew 5%. U.S. and international revenue mix was 58% and 42%, respectively. As for calculated current billings, we would like to note that our Q2 calculated current billings were negatively impacted by the sunset of our embedded solutions for Microsoft Defender as of May 1st. Earlier this year, we announced that we will be retiring our integration on Microsoft Defender and transitioning to BYOL model. Since this went into effect in Q2, we have been fielding inbounds from former Qualys on Microsoft Defender users and working closely with them to ensure that they understand the value of our cloud security solution, Total Cloud CNAP. Normalized for this change, our calculated current billings growth would have been 1%. 
In Q2, with the continued challenging spend environment, resulting in lower performance and upsell, our net dollar expansion rate declined to 102% from 104% last quarter. Conversely, we continue to see strong returns on our new business initiatives and achieve double-digit new bookings growth for the fourth consecutive quarter. With this momentum and new customer bookings growth, we believe we're building a stronger foundation to drive expansion and share gains over time. In terms of product contribution to booking, patch management and cybersecurity asset management combined made up 13% of LTM bookings and 22% of LTM new booking in Q2. Cloud Security Solutions Total Cloud DNAT made up 4% of LTM booking. Turning to profitability, reflecting our scalable and sustainable business model, adjusted EBITDA in Q2 was 69.9 million, representing a 47% margin, compared to a 48% margin a year ago. Operating expenses in Q2 increased by 10% to 59 million, primarily driven by a 22% increase in sales and marketing investments aimed at capturing the market opportunities in front of us. As we continue to increase our investment intensity and focus on sales and marketing enablement, customer success, and productivity, we believe we will be able to drive wallet share and long-term returns. EPS for the second quarter of 2024 was 1.52, and our free cash flow was 48.8 million, representing a 33% margin compared to 37% in the prior year. In Q2, we continue to invest the cash we generated from operations back into Qualys, including 1 million on capital expenditures and 35 million to repurchase 233,000 of our outstanding shares. As of the end of the quarter, we had 230.7 million remaining in our share repurchase program. With that, let us turn to guidance, starting with revenue. For the full year 2024, we are now expecting our revenue to be in the range of 597.5 to 601.5 million, which represents a growth rate of 8%. This compares to revenue guidance of 601.5 to 608.5 million last quarter. For the third quarter of 2024, we expect revenues to be in the range of 149.8 to 151.8 million, representing a growth rate of 5 to 7%. This guidance assumes continued deal scrutiny and no improvement to our net dollar expansion rate through the back half of this year. Shifting to profitability guidance, for the full year 2024, we expect EBITDA margin of 43 to 44%, and free cash flow margin in the mid to high 30. We expect full year EPS to be in the range of 5.46 to 5.62, up from the prior range of 5.06 to 5.30. For the third quarter of 2024, we expect EPS to be in the range of 1.28 to 1.36. Our planned capital expenditures in 2024 are expected to be in the range of 12 to 16 million. And for the third quarter of 2024, in the range of 4 to 7 million. Consistent with prior guidance, for the remainder of 2024, we intend to align our product and marketing investments to focus on specific initiatives aimed at driving more pipeline, supporting sales, including enhancing our partner program and expanding our federal vertical. As a percentage of revenues, we expect to prioritize an increase in investments in sales and marketing, as well as related support functions, systems, and people, with more modest increases in engineering and GNA. With that, Sumed and I would be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. At this time, we will conduct the question and answer session. As a reminder to ask a question, you'll need to press star 1-1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. To withdraw your question, please press star 1-1 again. Please stand by while we compile the Q&A roster. Our first question comes from the line of John Fleshpein of Choose. Your line is now open. Hey, thank you very much for taking the question, and uh, and congrats. Um, 
Jimmy, um, really great growth internationally, and I guess Med as well. Can you talk about, you know, what drove the international growth? Um, and then maybe, Jimmy, if you could talk about more specifics about some of the investments that you're making in sales and marketing going forward, um, that would be very helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, happy to. The international growth, we're seeing a stronger demand in that region relative to the U.S., with that said, the U.S. growth rate is impacted by the Microsoft Defender, um, and so that's been a headwind on the U.S. business as well as the direct business that we just share the growth rate for. Um, in terms of the sales and marketing investments, that we feel like it has been doing really well and their higher return on ROI is from the investments that we made on the partner side. As you can tell, our initiatives when it comes to enhancing our partner relationships and really working with them to um, revamp how we go to market and further incentivize our partners to understand why it makes sense for them to propose and, and put Qualys as a vendor of choice has been resonating. And so for us, it's number one, partner, and then number two, of course, um, primarily our investment has to is related to the headcount. So as we're targeting, continuing to grow the sales and marketing headcount by double digits in 2024, and we are on track to um, meet that goal, um, we're, we're positive with the momentum that we're seeing in the business today. Yeah, and Joel, I'll add to that is, you know, while we had a tough uh, upsell quarter uh, for Q2, uh, I think our investments that we've been making in the last few quarters have really, you know, given um, us uh, a lot of positive things that we are uh, excited about as an example with our new business growing double digits because of um, the way that we're we're enabling our uh, new business sales team because of the way as Jumi said we're uh, investing with our partners and the partners uh, pipeline is increasing their uh, win rates with our partners are uh, increasing as well uh, and pretty excited about our investment that we started last year in the federal space which again uh, had getting a, a six-figure new net new business deal in the federal uh, space for us is exciting, uh, and we it also highlights the opportunity that we have on the federal side, uh, and including in, within our existing customer base as well our investments in terms of taking our learnings from what we have been able to be successful with our new business, being able to train our post sales uh, teams as well to be more of hunters to enable them in a much better way, uh, etc. Has led to um, you know, customers were spending $500,000 or more with us, also growing uh, 18% uh, from last year in the same quarter. Uh, so those are, you know, a lot of the things that our investments are leading to positive trends. I think clearly we see an opportunity uh, in this uh, macro environment uh, that we have and the scrutiny that we face uh, from our customers with VM to really be able to get our sales team to uh, our product and marketing teams to align better and our sales team to execute better on the upsell opportunities that, that will come with the new uh, way the customers are looking at uh, their security spend and focusing on risk management and really you know, being able to spend their money uh, from cybersecurity where the risk is. And that's the big question a lot of people are not quite able to answer is where is your risk exactly? Uh, and that's what our ETM platform is going to help. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. One moment for our next question. Our next question comes from our line of Shrenik Katari of Baird. Your line is now open. Hey, yeah, thanks for, for taking my question. Uh, so, uh, Jumi, you mentioned, of course, the, the channel revenue uh, now making up 46%, which is kind of really uh, ticking up nicely. Can you just help provide uh, some more details on on uh, kind of overall, I would say, breakdown of, of the contribution for different types of partners if possible. Um, of course, you, you highlighted how you guys were trying to partner with uh, some of the cloud providers and marketplaces like AWS, uh, Azure, Oracle. Just, just curious if you can provide us some more color uh, in terms of those drivers, and then I'll follow up. Yeah, we think we don't break it down that way, but I can tell you that right now, uh, you know, our, our channel partners are resellers, so we're definitely working very closely with us and really bringing us a lot of the opportunities because they see the comprehensive set of capabilities that we can very rapidly bring to the customers who are currently in the market, have a project, and have a budget to execute on that. So they are sort of the first uh, folks who are working closely with us. In the last quarter, we released our MSSP portal, so we're seeing traction with uh, service providers who are continuing to 
add patch management as a service because just having VM scanning as a service is not a big differentiator. And so more and more of them are leveraging Qualys for now providing patch management as a service. And now we're starting to see that same thing from partners on uh, being able to provide services around cloud security deployments as well. Uh, and uh, we have a really nice, strong partnership with OCI on the GTM side, but as well as um, working with uh, AWS on the ADP credits with joint customers are some of the areas that we, we're really seeing good momentum. I, we don't break it down exactly like that, but that should give you a high level you know, sort of view of where we're seeing success with partners. Got it. That, that's very helpful, Sumed. And, and Jumi, one quick follow-up. Of course, uh, Sumed, you, you highlighted the development of, of course, the Enterprise Risk Platform, kind of helping uh, in, in how you're monetizing that offering. Just, just curious, like, given on the on the other side, there is aggressive overall pricing in the core VM that we are hearing from from other players, uh, kind of perhaps undercutting uh, pricing there. Uh, just curious, like. How were you able to show the, the upside on the cross margins as well, and uh, in this kind of environment? And, and can you provide us some uh, some quantitative insights into uh, into that and its expected impact of of net uh, dollar retention rates as well? Appreciate it. Yeah, in terms of the growth margin, we were very pleased to post the 84% growth margin up from 82% last year and then even 83% last quarter. That's primarily due to our optimization when it comes to our data centers, in addition to the fully depreciated asset that we're seeing right now. As you know, we, we have both the you know, hardware as well as on the cloud assets, and we're just leveraging and optimizing to make sure that we're, we're getting the margins that we think make sense for our business today. And then on the on the VM question that you asked, look, I think uh, we've we've talked about this uh, for the last many quarters that uh, VM is evolving and customers are really looking to uh, focus on remediation as well. And so even when they are looking at scan only solutions that only give them more uh, things and CVEs to fix, uh, when they are looking to optimize their budget for an outcome, they are looking at how to balance the scanning with patch management. And that's why our true risk eliminate uh, capability that we came out with giving customers more solutions they can buy from us in terms of being able to mitigate the risk is the most important because the, the, you know if today cyber budgets are have been tied and the questions that cybersecurity professionals are getting asked is well what's the outcome? What how much risk are you reducing? And if you're not able to articulate the risk and how much risk you're actually reducing, that's really when they face uh, challenges with, you know, should you get an increase in this budget if we're not focusing on remediation? And so just in the in the first half of this year, uh, getting 45 million patches deployed by Qualys agents really highlights that VM today is about uh, vulnerability assessment, but also combining with patch management and ability to mitigate the risk. And, and we see that in the numbers today with our patch management, cybersecurity asset management, uh, for net new bookings customers when they're coming to us and why we are seeing good success with that new business is we offer a unique differentiator in the market when, when people are looking to change their scanning solution because we're offering them patch management combined with the scanning solution. And that's really where uh, the vulnerability management has been evolving and this is nothing new. That's why we invested a few quarters ago to really focus on the remediation aspect of vulnerability management because you know, there is no there is no M in the VM if you don't actually fix things. Got it. Super helpful. Thanks so much, Anjumi. Thank you. One more question. Our next question comes from a line of Matt Hedberg of RBC. Your line is now open. Great. Uh, thanks for taking my questions, guys. Um, it sounds like NRR dipped down to 102, I think from 104 uh, last quarter. I'm curious, does that, do you, do you feel like that's starting to bottom now? Um, you know, do you think, you know, perhaps in the second half, whether it's pipeline or, or other drivers, um, you know, we could see a rebound there? I, I think as we work with our customers, we're definitely facing, a, a, you know, scrutiny on their, uh, when they have to do additional spend uh, with Qualys. So that's where we are working. I mean, it's leading to a lot of great engagements, and that's where we are, leading to the more conversations, how they optimize their spend, how they can balance their spend in the scanning side with the spend on the patch management and asset management side. And that's where you see, you know, in, in some cases, they optimize uh, right now for getting some additional solutions from Qualys uh, where they can grow in the future. Uh, I, I think we will have to uh, continue to see 
uh, in next quarter, how these conversations that we are having this quarter uh, translate into additional uh, upsells for the customers because, as you know, in, in this current environment, it's a little bit harder to, uh, with the scrutiny that they face, to know what is the timing of when they will adopt these additional solutions, especially with cloud security, et cetera. Uh, so we're pretty excited about the opportunity that we see. I think we're going to have to watch the next couple of quarters on how this rate uh, evolves, but over long term, definitely feel like we have uh, all the goods that customers, are, existing customers, are looking to invest additionally in, which is, in my mind, is patch management, cloud security, uh, overall sort of risk management, and more importantly, now questions coming up about AI, AI security. And so, our new solution that we announced that we're going to get out in September, which is really helping customers identify all of their AI LLMs uh, and looking at the risk of those uh, are going to be very positive. Those conversations, how they lead into uh, additional upsells and the timing of that is something that we're watching very closely. That's great. That, that's super helpful. And then um, in terms of um, the Microsoft Defender headwinds, can you remind us again when, when those will abate officially and, and, and you know, not become a drag on, on billings? Yeah, the sense that was effective May 1st, so it hit us for the first time in Q2. So the biggest impact that we um, we expect to see is in Q2. In other words, then, so, so what you're saying, Jimmy, is that um, it, 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 it's not going to be as big of a headwind in Q3 and, and Q4, or uh, just, just maybe, yeah, maybe just think about that headwind as we in the next couple quarters. That's right. That's right. It's not going to be material enough for us to normalize it in Q3 and Q4. Q2 is really the biggest quarter based on the billing schedule, and that's why when you take a look at our calculated current billings, the 2% decline normalized for this, if it hadn't happened, then it would have been approximately 1%. Got it. Super helpful. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. One moment for next question. Our next question comes from the line of Kingston Green of Canaccord Genuity. Your line is now open. Hi, thank you. So you've done a remarkable job building out the platform in the past couple of years. Uh, I just want to ask broadly, how would you describe VM demand at the moment? How cyclical is this? How secular is this? And then why do you view VM foundational? And then how can you leverage that to expand spend with existing customers? Thanks. Yeah, great question. You see, VM continues to be very foundational for any risk management exercise that any organization has. You know, if you look at every single uh, cybersecurity standard out there requires regular scanning uh, and patching for VM. Uh, I think as we have talked about, and, and I have talked about this in a few earnings calls in the past as well, is that VM is evolving. And so the while the overall focus on customers remains on VM. The, within VM, it's it's really customers are focusing on how do we get an outcome of actually being able to reduce the risk by fixing the things that are being discovered by VM. And so uh, what we see with our customer base is that uh, they are, with, with the tight budgets that they have and the scrutiny that they're putting on the conversations, they are actually looking to balance between uh, how much they uh, focus on scanning uh, and what's the point of scanning everything if they're not able to actually remediate stuff. And so how do they balance the, their investment in the VM sector between scanning and patch management and also asset management, as well as how do you expand the scanning into the cloud environment? And so those are the conversations that we hear a lot more. I think the, uh, the, the, the VM um, as, a, as a key part of risk management for the organization continues to be a key priority for all the customers that we talk to. So uh, I think we, as they are working with tight budgets right now and looking to balance that. I think we see this as a good opportunity for us because it is giving us opportunity to get our additional products like patch management, cybersecurity asset management seeded in with these customers as they're buying smaller amounts. But in the future, this could lead uh, them to cover more of the estate uh, that they currently have with us with scanning. Great. That's, that's well said. And then one more. So I want to just talk about Dynamics when selling cloud security, whether that's total cloud CNAP or something individual like CSPM. Uh, post crowd strike outage, vendor concentration has been widely discussed, rightly or wrongly. Um, you know, so big picture, how do you think the outage will play out specifically in cloud security, given how nascent the space is, and you know how much of an opportunity do you see? Uh, look, I think the questions customers are asking are obviously valid in terms of how do you balance the risk of the security solution being deployed itself versus the risk it is mitigating, right? And I think 
uh, the, the advantage I see for Qualys is that we are not concentrated on the agent as being the foundational way to deliver service, uh, security service to the customer like some of the other providers where you know, the agent is the main and the only way that they can deliver services. We have a pretty comprehensive capability of delivering security services that match the customer's operational appetite of deploying different ways to assess risk. And so we have uh, agentless scanning, we have snapshot scanning, we have agent-based scanning, we have off-site scanning. So there's a many different ways. And so what we see with customers, we obviously got a lot of questions asked around, you know, what are what are the best ways that Qualys is, of course, ensuring that uh, we are uh, testing, we are very con uh, confident about the way we roll out our updates for different technologies, but also the fact that they can actually, with their licensing, balance the their risk of where they want to deploy uh, uh, agentless scanning versus where they want to deploy agent-based scanning. Uh, and we give those options to them, which they are pretty happy about that they don't have to really take that big risk of only having an agent and that's the only way to deliver the service. And so in cloud, I think the advantage uh, is that you can do a good amount of assessment with CSPM just using APIs without deploying um, a, a particular way of scanning. And so that we, this is why about a year ago when we released our Flex Scan, which is a part of our uh, Total Cloud CNAP solution, the license actually includes the ability for the customers to do four types of different scans on the same asset, and they can pick and choose. So if they want, they can do an API assessment with absolutely nothing installed. On the workload, they can use a, a um, agent to be installed automatically. They can use an automatic network scanner uh, in that environment, uh, or they can use uh, a snapshot scan of a image that is not actually live. So I do see that in cloud security, while the questions will come up, it's not so much about, in my mind, the vendor con concentration. Uh, it's really about uh, the the sensor concentration, in my mind, which is is your vendor providing you multiple different ways to assess your environment in leveraging basically the, the different types of risk profile that you might have on different assets. All right, I agreed with that. Um, thanks again and congrats. Of course. Thank you, one moment for our next question. Our next question comes from the line of Young Kim of Loop Capital, your line is now open. Okay, great. Um, um, Sumed, um, on the Microsoft Defender headwind, um, I am assuming you planned for that. Um, clearly, there was uh, some execution issue that you did not anticipate. If you can elaborate on that a bit, and then um, also, what are the products that were directly affected by the lower attach rate related to Microsoft Defender? Microsoft was leveraging, uh, you know, our very basic sort of uh, scan-only legacy capability, right, which was that it was not VMDR, so um, those customers, and we did not have access to those customers uh, to be able to work with them, to upsell them to all the other things that our like, current customers upsell to, whether it's cybersecurity asset management, whether it's uh, patch management, whether it is... Um, um, told cloud uh, assessment or now with the new um, AI scanning that we are releasing. So for us, it, you know, it was customers in that environment were only using scan-only solution from us. And as we all see right now, what's happening in the market is really customers are looking for more holistic, comprehensive outcome of their VM solution, which includes actual fixing and reduction of risk and not just more scanning. And so uh, that's really where we see the opportunity is Customers don't just want more CVE reporting. They they want a way to say this is these are the things you should fix that will reduce the risk, and then a solution that can fix that. And so that's where we we see the opportunity. Uh, if these customers come to us, uh, we can focus on helping them see the bigger picture of how they can reduce the risk from their vulnerabilities, rather than just you know keep keep looking at them and not doing anything about them. Okay, great. Thanks for that answer. Um, Jumi, um, anything that we should be aware of in regard to pricing, especially with second half renewal season coming up? Um, no change from our perspective, uh, from a competitive standpoint, and no change from our, our own pricing. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. One moment for next question. Our next question comes from the line of Jonathan Ho of William Blair. Your line is now open. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I just wanted to um, 
you know, maybe dig in a little bit more in terms of understanding the need to balance uh, profitability with you know, some of the investments that you've been making on the channel side. You know, can you give us a sense of, you know, have the, you know, initial investments, you know, sort of paid off the way that you've expected. I know it takes a little bit of time to translate into, you know, billings and you know, ultimately to revenue, but, um, you know, or has it been disappointing? Has it been, you know, sort of, yeah, just want to get a sense of how you're thinking about that. Great question, Jonathan. Look, when we, we embarked on this journey, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, really, uh, we, we've been focusing on a few different things and uh, some of them uh, sometimes work, some of them don't. But overall, like I said, we are pleased with the investment really bringing us um, that in improvement in uh, four straight quarters of double-digit growth for new business, which we have not had uh, as much in the past. And then just looking at uh, opportunities coming from partners, looking at partner opportunities having better uh, close rates, uh, looking at continuing our $500,000 plus customers actually increase in the stuff environment by 18%. Uh, so I do think that uh, uh, different things that we have done in terms of training our new business uh, sales reps in terms of investments in channel have brought us uh, those sort of opportunities. And now in, in the further quarters, we need to focus on working through those opportunities, closing through those opportunities, continuing to invest uh, additionally with our channel partners. But like we said, we, we are you know, in a fairly um, unique position this year to continue to actually invest in our sales and marketing GTM because we see the opportunity when most of the companies are really cutting down on their sales marketing investment. And I think that's really what we look for in the further quarters is to improvements in our uh, upsell rates in kind of similar to what we're seeing with our new business and, um, you know, really continuing our investment on the federal side, like I said, just getting um, a good six-figure six deal in the federal net new business deal on the federal side uh, is also very uh, promising for us because of the investments we're making with the team that we have built, the, the marketing investment we made this year to uh, actually host a um, um, conference just specifically for federal, which is our first one, and also the investment we have made in being FEDRAMP moderate, but more importantly, we're just uh, you know really, really anticipating and waiting for the FEDRAMP high certification, which we are looking forward to getting end of this year. And I think that investment over the next couple of years should give us really significant advantage uh, because there's no other FEDRAMP high platform that has so many so many different capabilities and modules that go in, uh, in together with that. And so I think there are certain, um, you know, these are some of the things that have worked and continuing to work, and we're looking now to, to take the learnings from the new business improvements and apply those to our existing business so that our, you know, post-sales uh, uh, farmers uh, learn how to do a little bit of hunting and be able to find some of these deals in, in a tough macro uh, environment and uh, and be able to bring additional opportunities by working closely with the partner side on the upsell, just as the way we are working on the partner with the partners on the new business as well. Excellent. Um, and just a, a quick follow-up. So as you take on additional chief product officer you know, responsibilities, you know, can you help us understand you know, where you see the biggest opportunities? Is this narrowing of the product focus? Is this you know, approaching new areas? I, I'm just trying to understand um, you know, how you think about sort of um, you know, taking on these additional um, you know, responsibilities and, and uh, what you see as that opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, look, I, you guys, you know, you know my history. It's a little bit hard to get the chief product officer out of uh, me. It's always there somewhere. But uh, if you look, we for us, we have always been innovation driven, really listening closely to our customers and bringing uh, solutions to market. Like we do, patch management was all about operational efficiency, which is what uh, you know the the security teams are looking at. And so, as I look forward uh, to the next couple of years. The, the, if you look at the current environment, the, the challenges cybersecurity professionals are facing when, when you look at the almost flat uh, budget increase in cyber overall uh, is because of not being able to articulate the question, well, how much risk is cyber bringing to our business? And so because without that, you cannot really, dis if you don't know how much risk you have, you cannot articulate that risk in dollar value. You cannot decide on exactly how much should you spend, which is the appropriate amount to take down that risk. And, that's really what I'm excited about with our ATM platform that we're coming out with and our some of our beta partners that are there. It's not, there are multiple different security controls you can implement to re, uh, reduce risk, 
but let's first focus on being able to identify, being able to articulate the risk in dollar terms to the business. And from there, you can decide which are the most effective security controls that you can put in place to bring down that risk. And it may not be the exact same control in every environment. You know, In some cases, maybe a zero trust is a better security investment given how much risk you have versus in other cases, maybe uh, a better patch management solution is, is enough to reduce the risk. And so as I look at from a product perspective, um, you know, first, I'm glad that Dino and uh, has built a good team, and they are taking more and more uh, focus on the GTM side. So it gives me additional opportunity to focus and work with the product and marketing teams to not only look at the the future products that we are coming up with, especially on risk management, risk articulation, but also in the short term, the opportunity given what we are seeing with our total cloud uh, solution, the conversations that we are having with customers, uh, being able to align my product management and product marketing teams together so we can execute better on marketing our total cloud solutions and being able to create additional opportunities. So some of those things are really what I'm looking forward to as, as I you know, look into this uh, GProg officer role. Great. Thank you. Thank you. One moment for our next question. Our next question comes from our line of Rudy Kessinger of DA Davidson. Your line is now open. Hey guys, thanks for uh, taking my question. I guess just on this tough upsell environment, um, you know, your, your net expansion rate is down to 102%, but it, it's almost down to basically no upsell. I guess, are you seeing contractions with, um, you know, any sizable portion of your customer base? I, it, not customers who churn, but customers who are staying with you. Are they reducing their footprint? Or, or I guess just where could that bottom um, obviously, we would think it would bottom at 100%, but it, it could potentially even go lower than that. Great question, Rudy. So as we mentioned, overall, our gross retention has stayed the same around 90%. And so I think for us, it's really about customers, as I mentioned earlier, are looking to balance uh, the, the, the set of solutions that they have from Qualys looking at how can they have a better impact by adopting additional solutions uh, from qualis like patch management, cybersecurity asset management, and sometimes based on, you know, they may decide that in this particular environment, I would rather uh, take those licenses and focus more on patch management and my server environment in because currently the budgets are tight. So what we are seeing is right now, uh, you know, our overall gross retention continues to be about the same. It's more about customers uh, looking at uh, optimizing and balancing their spend between the different capabilities and as part of that adopting additional capabilities which may not in the immediate term mean a immediate uh, upsell uh, from a total uh, amount perspective in that particular uh, opportunity but it also creates us for opportunity in the future that we can increase the accounts there and so again I think this is sort of uh, the, we have a tough quarter on this uh, overall industry uh, you know, expansion rates are coming down, but we, we, we're going to take the conversations that we are having because of this right now and see how they're going to, those conversations are leading to opportunities to close in the next uh, couple of quarters. Uh, so again, we are, of course, we look forward to uh, improving our net expansion rate over uh, the next few quarters. When that, the timing of that exactly is something we are also keeping a, a close eye on. Thank you. One moment for our next question. Our next question comes from the line of Rob Owens of Piper Sandler. Your line is now open. Hi, this is Aiden on for Rob Owens. Thank you for taking my question. Can you provide more color on the economic backdrop in the quarter related to deal scrutiny? And also, what did you see related to demand from enterprise and SMB from customers in 2Q? Thank you. I think the macro generally continued to be the same as we have expected. Where you know it's it's uh, budgets are generally flat. We are seeing you know customers trying to think about uh, in some cases cybersecurity versus AI, which is why we're excited about the AI security product. Uh, overall, I think the macro has stayed the, the same. We faced uh, you know additional scrutiny, I would say, this quarter um, from customers just looking to say, well, should we continue to uh, you know adopt different solutions while keeping the overall spend the same or should we just keep as is and not expand too much. Uh, so I, I would say that for us it's really about, and I don't think we saw any major 
uh, difference between the enterprise versus the SMB segment from the last, uh, you know, from what we've been seeing in the last few quarters. And so I think the environment continues to be tough and we continue to face, uh, or at least this quarter, we face traditional scrutiny on the, on the budgets. Thank you. One moment for our next question. Our next question comes from the line of Joshua Tilton of Wolf Research. Your line is now open. Hey, this is Patrick on for Josh. Thanks for taking my question. Wanted to dive a little deeper on the customers impacted by the sunsetting of the Microsoft partnership. You mentioned that you were having conversations with those customers throughout the quarter. So you can, can you just talk about your updated expectations for those customers moving over to Qualys to use your solutions directly? And then also, what does the size of that opportunity look like? I think, like as Jumi said, right, we the, the sunset actually happened just in recently in, in May when the actual uh, sunset happened. I think for us, it's we did not have access to those customers, so we can't, you know, we couldn't quite reach out to them as we had mentioned earlier. Uh, I think it is about uh, as customers are sort of transitioning to a different solution or have the option they are looking at, and sometimes they come and talk to us. So we've had a few customers come and talk to us. Uh, we may not always know that they are coming from that Microsoft uh, thing because a lot of times they might have additional footprint already with Qualys and they may just expand and buy additional licenses for their Azure environment instead of uh, what they what, what they were doing with Qualys with the Azure integration. Um, I, I don't think at this point we're thinking of that opportunity as uh, anything that from what we see as a material a thing in Q3, Q4. I think we'll continue to see how the conversations evolve and see how many of those actually continue to come to us, but we're not assuming any any additional benefit in the guidance that we've given from, from coming from that opportunity. Okay, thanks. And then just a quick follow-up. Um, is there any color you can give us on how you expect billings growth trend for maybe 3Q or the full year? Thanks. Yeah, we have, we don't guide to current billings, but we did indicate that the annual current billings growth will be trend more or less along the lines of um, the same as revenue growth rate. So I would assume the same. For the second half, the revenue growth guidance will be more or less in line with the current billings. Helpful. I appreciate it. Thank you. One more for our next question. Our next question comes from the line of Brian Essex of J.P. Morgan. Your line is now open. Great. Thank you for taking the question. I was wondering if you could maybe dig in a little bit on, um, you know, customers spending more than 500 and overall customer count uh, in, in aggregate. How should we think about that faster growing large customer cohort versus the smaller customers and puts and takes there that um, maybe give us an indication of where you're focusing your efforts from a sales and marketing perspective? For the sales um, marketing perspective, we're, we are focused more on the enterprise. It's just because that's where we've seen more success. And as you can tell by our larger customers who continue to increase their spend with us, um, and we've seen success there, we are have we are continuing to see some headwinds on the smaller end, the smaller customers or the SME and SMB space. And, and those 500 plus customers, is that? Revenue from those customers that is that are growing 18 percent, or is that the customer count that's growing 18 percent? The customer count and the dollar amount is, uh, are, are growing both at 18 percent, actually. So the 18 percent that we reference is the customer count, but the dollar amount is about the same. Got it. That's helpful. Thank you. Thank you. One moment for our next question. Our next question comes from the line of Hamza Farawala of Morgan Stanley. Your line is now open. I thank you for uh, fitting me in back here. Uh, uh, the bill start with the apologies if this was uh, on earlier, but um, the the sorry, the Hamza, we're having a hard time hearing you. Hi, can you hear me better? Breaking up uh, your your audio. Maybe let's try again. Um, traveling. But uh, um, just a question on the uh, the current billings um, for Jumi. I think uh, so. It's down two percent this quarter. Uh, I believe you mentioned the Microsoft headwind. Without that, it would have been up one percent. 
anything else that I'm that I'm missing there, if you could get on the Microsoft customer relationship, you know, obviously Microsoft was a partner as well as a customer. Any any changes in, in conversation? We we couldn't quite hear the last part. Can you repeat the last part about the customer relationship? Microsoft? Um, if, if Microsoft remains a customer, any any changes in conversation there? No, no change. No change. So it's it's as expected. Okay. Um, with respect to uh, the the impact on our top line from both Microsoft Azure and Microsoft Customer for this year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure no further questions at this time. Thank you for your participation in today's conference. This does conclude the program. You may now disconnect. Goodbye.